All right, here we go. Quest for the best barbecue in Kansas City. Let's go. All right, so today uh, we're gonna kick off our quest for the best barbecue in Kansas City. We were kind of kicking this back and forth whether we really wanted to do barbecue because it's such a controversial topic in Kansas City. It's not a question of Kansas City barbecue because we all know that it's the best, but if you ask 50 different people what their favorite barbecue is in Kansas City, you'll get 50 different answers. But we think we figured out a way that we can do it. Yeah, and it also goes into the just different styles of barbecue and the styles of restaurants. So right. we developed a ranking system. Right. There's five categories, meats, sauce, sides, menu variety, and atmosphere of the restaurant. And then this is gonna be a fluid ranking. So we're gonna do this every few weeks. We'll test out a few new restaurants and uh, we'll always have our top 10 up on the board. So every time there's a new episode, the rankings can and, and will change based on that. And the other nice thing is if you're looking for a good barbecue spot in Kansas City, you can look at the overall rankings of, hey, I want a nice sit down restaurant or hey, I just want some good barbecue, good barbecue to determine maybe which restaurant's best for you at that given opportunity. So let's jump right into it. We're gonna go to our first location, LC's Barbecue. All right, to start off, we are at a Kansas City staple. We are at LC's Barbecue right off of uh, Manuel Cleaver, no, Martin Luther King yep. Boulevard, right? Yep. Uh, just east of 71 Highway. When you pull up, there's nothing flashy. This is a no frills restaurant. I think it's an old gas station. Yep, that's um, right. And I, I would say, as far as atmosphere goes, the simplicity is what makes this place. The barbecue is great. It shows up on uh, paper plates with plastic silverware. The food is phenomenal. You tried the beans, and tell us a little bit about the uh, staple here. On yes. Side. Uh, so they have spicy fried green beans and those are fantastic the beans were really good they've got uh, little chunks of meat and they also gave us uh, some french fries and i'm a big steak fry fan so they, they cut them here so they're very thick great seasoning on them all around excellent so we walked in and we ordered our food the lady at the desk helped us kind of guide what the best what the most favorite thing was so we got the short end ribs these are phenomenal the first thing that you're gonna notice is that they smoke it with kind of a crisp on the outside of the ribs, but it's not dry. The inside is still juicy, it's tender, tons of flavor. They serve it on a piece of bread and then they just lather it with the sauce. I'd say the sauce is um, it's kind of a tangy sauce, mm -hmm. um, not real spicy, um, not super sweet. It was very, very good. The, yeah, it the, was unexpected for yeah, sure. The combo of the sauce with the crisp of the ribs was, incredible as kansas city this was our first time here yeah. for both of us yeah. so very pleasantly uh surprised and really how good it, everything was so the last thing we need to talk about is the menu variety there's not much of a menu it's the same menu from when they started it's still hanging on the wall and you've got sandwich um, sides and ribs and that's pretty much it they've got some desserts too but there's nothing crazy about it it's not going to take you a whole lot of time to decide, which is why I love small menus. Yeah. Uh, but if you are the one that you are wanting some barbecue, but maybe you're also going with people that don't love barbecue, probably steer away from, from LC's. Yeah. But if you want some true tasty barbecue, uh, this is your spot. Overall, this has been a great experience. I'm glad we stopped here. Yeah. I would say if you are visiting Kansas City or moving to Kansas City and barbecue is something that you want to explore, do not leave LC's off your list. Highly recommend it. All right, let's go to our next location. All right, so when you leave LC's, you head a little bit closer into town, uh, you are gonna hit Main Street, and that takes us to our second location, which is Gates Barbecue. This is one of five locations. We picked this one simply out of convenience. We are right on the corner of Main Street and Linwood Boulevard, um, just north of the plaza, and just south of downtown. So the building in here is really cool. It's got kind of a, a traditional, kind of classical architecture. You'll notice in the ceilings, they've got tofford ceilings, or I guess you call them uh, stamped tin roof panels. 
really cool fans that are all belt driven, so they're all running at the same time at the same speeds. Uh, they got some classic jazz music playing, which really makes for a nice calming atmosphere. Very, very, very Kansas city -ian. So let's jump right into it. Probably the thing that Gates is known for the most is their sauce. Um, the sauce, it, it used to just come in one flavor, um, but as it grew in popularity and they started distributing to grocery stores, they introduced more flavors and the sauce was great. Yeah, so we got regular, uh, sweet and spicy. Those are the three main ones. And you can get it at any grocery store in Kansas City and around Kansas City uh, surrounding areas as well. You can grab it. I mean, it's it's always, always on the shelves and it's it's been a go-to of my family's for forever. The sauce was great. Of course, just like anywhere else, we got it on the ribs, the short end ribs. Yep. The ribs were good. They were um, a little bit less meaty than some of the other places that we've been, but the flavor was still good. I, I want to say, I want to be careful when I say this, it had a very burned flavor, but burned as in just like really, really smoky. Not burned oh, as yeah. like you're eating burnt food. Right. So very, very strong smoky flavor to it. But then you put that sweet sauce on top, and oh man, it was good. Yeah, a little more tangy mm -hmm. uh, than others, or I would call it spicy. Most people would label it, you know, like more of a kick at the, at the end of it. Um, still really good, just more of a kick than, than most. Talk about the beans, Mr. Bean Man. You love yes. these. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, these beans were, I mean, just, they're like candied almost. I yeah. Mean, sweet. They were warm, like to the perfect temperature. They weren't like burning your mouth, but you could still consume them. Uh, they were. There's. They've got some uh, like bacon bits in there, or, or chunks of uh, pork. Thing that I noticed, and I'm not a huge baked beans guy, but this was actually pretty good. It's got a sweetness to it. It's almost like they just pour pounds and pounds of brown sugar into it. So, I mean, that's probably what they do. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was really good. We also got the coleslaw. Um, Kind of your basic average coleslaw, nothing special. Um, I would order it again. The right menu. menu. Um, so they have a, a, a lunch special, they call it the Nooner, Monday through Friday uh, from open till 2 p.m. It's just, it's burn-in sandwich with uh, another slice of meat on top and a side. It's basically uh, their lunch special. It's their lunch special. I look fantastic. As far as variety, uh, I mean, you're gonna have a little bit more than some of your basic menus, but really, I mean, there's nothing outside of barbecue. You can't come get like a, a salad or, you know, a burger. You're gonna get- yeah, you're gonna get barbecue, barbecue here. Yep. They've got wings, smoked wings, uh, but that's about as far outside of the realm of barbecue that you're gonna get here. So a really good menu. Little fun fact that I learned when we were doing a little bit of pre-research for this. You've probably heard of the rapper Tech 9 He's got a song, OG, where he references Ollie Gates a lot. Ollie Gates actually did not start. Gates Barbecue is his father, George, right? George Gates. George. Yep. But when Ollie came into the picture, he was a very bright businessman. He went to school for business, and he was the one that really expanded Gates into what we know it today. Multiple locations, sauces in the stores, spices in the stores. Mm -hmm. So he even changed the name. I think he actually branched out one of his locations and called it OG for Ollie Gates. So I think that's a conception that a lot of people have is that Ollie was the originator. But he did have a very, very strong impact on what we know Gates did. Overall, Gates was... It's definitely a Kansas City state. Yeah. You can't come to Kansas City, do barbecue, and not have Gates. Yeah. So, you gotta at least try it. And to experience uh, how they greet you here, because it is very unique in the way that when you walk up to order your food, it's an experience all of its own. So Yeah, um, they call it cafeteria style. You walk in, grab yourself a tray, and just wait to get screamed at, so you better know what you want. That's right. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for Gates, and now we are going to go to the next location. All right, so for our final stop on this episode of Kansas City Barbecue, we are at Fiorella's Jack Stack. Um, there are five locations of this restaurant. Now, we specifically came to the Freight House District uh, location. It's just north of Union Station, and if you don't know anything about Union Station, you should go check out our first video. Uh, we'll put the link down in the comments or the description section. Go check that out. We did a little Christmas tour there. We'll probably do another video just at Union Station at some point. But we picked this location specifically for its atmosphere. You and I both are kind of suckers for cool historical buildings that have been repurposed. This was an original Freight House building. So back in the heyday of the Union Station using it as you know a, a train depot, they used this building to service train cars, unload train cars, things of that nature. And you can still tell in the architecture, they've got archways um, on the walls that they've 
redone, uh, but kept the architecture. It's really, really nice in here. We, you'll probably notice we're uh, wearing different clothing from the other ones. We actually had to, we tried to come on Friday, the same day that we did the other ones, and they had a two hour wait on a Friday at 12.30 in the afternoon. You know? Very popular place. So we had to make reservations to come back on Monday. Yeah, so if you come at all, make reservations before you come. Yeah. Uh, especially, trip. yeah, especially if any night, but even lunch, like you should make reservations. Other cool thing about being close to Union Station, there's a, a, a crosswalk, so you can walk oh, yeah. from Union Station over the train tracks and drops you off actually right in the parking lot here. So you can check out Union Station and come over here for lunch. Yeah, you can make it a whole evening. So atmosphere is going to be elevated here. I mean, this is more of a fine dining barbecue place. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to have linen wrapped silverware. You're going to have really nice plates. Uh, there's a full service bar that'll make you any cocktail you want. Um, it really shows in the presentation. You can bring uh, family for Christmas here for, for Christmas dinner. You can bring all your coworkers for like a corporate outing here. Very, very high end fine dining type barbecue. What do you think about the food? Yeah, so we ordered um, the free meat platter and a couple sides. So the ribs were, I mean, legit fall off the bone. The cheesy corn here is like crap, the staple. It is, if you ask anyone in Kansas City about Jack Sack, more than likely the first thing they're gonna say is, oh, have you tried the cheese cheesy corn? corn? It is corn and a ton of cheese and just amazingness all in all in one dish. Oh, the, the menu variety here is just oh yeah, that's the other thing. None. You're gonna bring a big group here. Maybe not everybody loves barbecue. This is a great place to bring them. Some of the other places we go to are die-hard barbecue places, but here they had salmon, trout, shrimp, a uh, whole bunch of different chicken. Yeah, even salad, like salad. Gourmet, gourmet salad. Yeah, so you can get non-barbecue options here. Which, again, if you have those people that in your party that are just not barbecue people, you can still my wife. Yeah, <laughs> you can still bring them here and and they enjoy it. She so. loves the salmon. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, that wraps it up for the Jack Stack location. So stay tuned and let's see how these things rank out. All right, so that wraps up our first episode with our first three locations. Before we get into how we ranked these, don't forget, uh, go subscribe, like this video and hit the little bell so that you get an alert every time we make a new video. And as always, we love making these videos, but we even more love to help you with your real estate needs. So give me a call if you want to go look at some houses. Give Taylor a call if you want some help on the financing side. But let's jump into our rankings. All right, so first up we had LC's. Mm -hmm. um, so for meat, LC's was a 4.6. For sauces, we had a 4.4. Sides, 3.6. Atmosphere, 2.4. Menu variety, 2.7. Giving us a grand total of 17.7 for LC's barbecue. Pretty good right out of the gate. Uh, then we went to Gates. Gates Barbecue. Gates Barbecue. We went to that location on Main Street. Remember that? So the meat, we gave it a 3.9. X stacks. And its meat was a 3.7. Sauce was a 4.2, and because of the cheesy corn, the sides were a 4.5. Uh, the atmosphere at Jack Stack was a 4.8, as well as the menu variety being a 4.8, giving us a grand total of 22 out of Jack Stack on top of our ranking so far. So tune into our next episode to see if anyone takes over Jack Stack or where they come into play. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See you next week.